welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan intensifies crackdown on Jaish e Mohammed founder Masood Azhar. Uncertainty looms over Afghanistan amid violence and economic crisis. And Pakistan tries to undermine Kashmir peace efforts. Let's begin the show with Pakistan, which is trying hard to escape the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force. And it has intensified its efforts to crack down on dreaded terrorist and founder of Jaish e Mohammed, Masood Azhar. The Pulwama attack plotter is untraceable and his catch is vital for Pakistan to satisfy the anti terror watchdog. We have a report. Pakistan is leaving no stone unturned to escape the grey list of FATF the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. All eyes are now on the detention of Jazz Chief Maulana Masood Azhar, whom Islamabad has long claimed to be untraceable. Masood Azhar is responsible for numerous terror attacks in India. The Indian Parliament attack in December 2001. The Pathan Court terror attack in 2016 and the Pulwama attack in 2019. Masood Azhar was branded a global terrorist by the United Nations in May 2019. He's a wanted man who India freed in return for the victims of the 1999 hijacking of the IC-814 by Indian Airlines. A month before the FATF meet in February this year, an anti-terrorism court in Gujranwala issued an arrest warrant against Masood Azhar on charges of terror financing. Pakistan is well aware that the country will be taken off the grey list if an on-site assessment shows that the measures it has taken to stop funding terrorism and money laundering are sustainable and irreversible. Pakistan is a minimal satisfier. It pretends that there is no issue, that they are trying to look for these people. In some cases, that they have arrested these people and jailed them, sentenced them, but they live on their, in, their, in the luxury of their own, own homes. They operate their organizations from there. If a particular organization is banned internationally, they also comply. So you had lashkar e taiba for instance, banned, then uh, uh, jamaat ud dawa its uh, so-called political front was also banned. So now they operate as uh, Fala Insaniyat uh, Foundation. There is, as I said, it is all a question of a sham where they pretend to comply with international norms, but they have kept the entire resources and manpower and leaderships for terrorism in complete protection. Failing pressure from FATF, Islamabad has recently acted against Sajid Mir the main handler of the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. Sajid, who was once declared dead by Pakistan, has now been convicted and sentenced to 15 years in jail. Hafiz Said, founder of the lashkar e taiba terror outfit on whom the US has placed a 10 million US dollars bounty, was sentenced to 31 years in jail ahead of the FATA plenary meeting in Paris. The action against Jaish chief Masood Azhar now comes as part of the plan to appease FATF. According to Indian intelligence report, Masood Azhar is enjoying the patronage of the Pakistani establishment in Bahawalpur city of Punjab province. Pakistan is also home to numerous terror organizations, five being India-centric, including lashkar e taiba and jaish e Muhammad. The United States has even exposed Pakistan for providing a launching pad to many foreign terror organizations like Islamic State and the Taliban. The fact that Pakistan is a terrorist sponsoring state, that it has supported terrorism both against India and into Afghanistan uh, is very well known, very well documented across the world. Uh, they are on uh, terrorist organizations in Pakistan are on 
uh, terrorist listings of America, Europe, uh, uh, the United Nations, a variety of uh, countries as well, other countries as well. So there's no, no doubt about Pakistan's role. The point is nobody is going to help us fight our battles. And I think we have been very steadily consolidating our victories against Pakistani-sponsored terrorism. And we will simply have to continue to consolidate those victories, ensure that our policies and our strategies of counterterrorism are effective on our own soil, if necessary and possible, project certain strategies into the adversary's territory as well. But uh, I don't think Pakistan is going to achieve anything significant beyond the murder of innocents. Pakistan's list of actionable points shared with FATF does not reflect its commitment to combat terror. In reality, the country remains a safe haven for terrorists and terror financing activities. The biggest example is that no action has been taken against Tal Saeed son of 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed, who is the new face of Jamaat Dawa outfit. According to intelligence agencies, Talha is next in line to take over functions of JUD, the parent body of the globally proscribed terror outfit lashkar e -Taiba. Despite mounting proof of Pakistan's role in international terrorism sponsorship, the country has taken no significant counterterrorism measures on its turf. In truth, Islamabad has taken cosmetic measures prior to each plenary session of the global watchdog FATF, which has kept Pakistan on its grey list for failing to curb money laundering and terror financing. Superficial steps are taken to get off the grey list of FATF, while the country remains a hotbed of terrorism in reality. For several decades, Pakistan has been trying to spoil the peaceful environment of India. It has been training terrorists to create mayhem in the country and destroy the communal harmony. Along with sponsoring targeted killings in Punjab and Kashmir, Pakistan is pushing narcotics through the border of Punjab. The narcotics money is being used to fund terrorism. Take a look. Central agencies in India have revealed that Pakistan is conspiring for last several years to disturb peace in Indian Punjab through targeted killings and using terror funds and drugs. Murder and other attacks are being carried out by ISI through Khalistani terrorists and gangsters in Punjab. These targeted killings have alerted the central agencies who are investigating Pakistan's role in these crimes. Apart from the killings, Pakistan's ISI continued to pump illegal drugs into India through Punjab. And heroin has been the major narcotic, being smuggled into the country to generate funds which experts indicate are used to fund militancy in region. The money being paid by drug traffickers is used by terrorists to fund the purchase of sophisticated weapons to form in terror in Kashmir and Punjab. They had got hold of these weapons through some outside forces. And outside forces, I mean the forces which are inimical to India, our security, and again, to specify it all the more, the militant groups, the terrorist groups, which are hiding in Punjab, hiding in Pakistani Punjab and elsewhere, as also the support of ISI to them. So as on date, I see the situation is extremely serious, it, because if there is a gang up between the gangs of Punjab and the militants or the ISI, that kind of hobnobbing can be very, very dangerous for the security and integrity of the country. Lining up terrorists along the line of control, sending in arms with the help of drones, has revealed that Pakistan has activated its K2 plan, which stands for Kashmir and Khalistan. The intelligence has on several occasions spoken about this dual plan by Pakistan. 
Moreover, terror groups like Babbar Khalsa Khalistan Force and the Pakistani Army have been using drones and unmanned aerial vehicles to infiltrate India's border through Punjab and drop weapons which were used by terror groups stationed in the state. Recently, a 33-page dossier by the Indian Army also unmasked Pakistan's nefarious terror designs aimed to bleed India. The dossier details how the Pakistani establishment, including its army, carries out infiltration bits across the borders. The file also highlights the killing of policemen, teachers and migrant workers in Jammu and Kashmir. We have to be very clear in our mind that Pakistan will not stop from doing such nefarious activities, nefarious deeds. They'll keep on doing it on one issue or the other, whatever issue comes in handy for them. Mm. They have got only one agenda. And the agenda is primarily because of the reason that the moment Pakistani government, whatever it might be, whatever organization or political party or army or whatever it is, the day they stop their anti-India tirade and anti-India stand, the Malwis, Ulemas, the fundamentalists living in Pakistan will ensure that the government is over their Pakistani government is overthrown immediately. Pakistan is the biggest perpetrator and supporter of terrorism and masquerades as its victim. It has been accused by several countries of involvement in a variety of terrorist activities in both its local region of South Asia and beyond. Islamabad should take immediate, sustained and irreversible action to ensure that no territory under its control is used for terrorist activities. Let's shift our focus to India's Jammu and Kashmir where the security forces are on high alert as the situation in the region is tense. The valleys witnessing encounter one after the other. In the latest, park back terrorist fire indiscriminately upon a police Naga party in Srinagar Lal Bazar area. In the terror incident, an ASI Mushtaq Ahmed was killed and two constables suffered injuries in the attack. A report. park back terrorists seem hell-bent to resurrect violence in Jammu and Kashmir. The region is witnessing encounters one after the other. park back terrorists are not only targeting innocent unarmed civilians, but also the security forces in the region. In the most recent incident, terrorists in Srinagar's Lal Bazar neighborhood opened fire on the police officers. Mustaq Ahmad, an assistant sub-inspector, was killed in the attack while Fayaz Ahmad and Abu Bakr, two constables, suffered injuries. <laughs> Mustaq Ahmad's family drowned in sadness over the cold-blooded murder, remain inconsolable with tears continuously rolling down their eyes. His wife kept crying copiously over the sudden tragic death of a husband. टेरिस्ट ने करना में हमला किया अंधाधुंध आके फायरिंग कर दिया जिसमें हमारे एक एएसआई मुस्ताक साहब शहीद हो गए और दो पुलिसकर्मी और जख्मी है मैं अभी हॉस्पिटल से मिलकर आया हूं दोनों स्टेबल है और इस पे सीसी फुटेज का हम लोग एनालिसिस कर रहे हैं जो इसमें पाया जाएगा उसको बहुत जल्दी न्यूट्रलाइज करेंगे हम लोग इस्लामाबाद इज कंसिस्टेंटली मेकिंग एफर्ट्स टू एस्केलेट टेरर रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर this has been happening in the last three to four weeks and it is coinciding with the situation in Pakistan. Their economy is in doldrums, inflation is at its peak, the army is being openly questioned. These instances have never happened in Pakistan. So a diversion is created by engineering attacks in Kashmir. Following the incidents of targeted killings in Kashmir, Further threatening the minor community, the security forces are on the alert to neutralize any violent situation. In the latest, Indian security forces have neutralized a Jash terrorist identified as Kasar Koka, active since 2018 in Avantepura town of Kashmir. According to Jammu and Kashmir recent report, 
a total of 118 terrorists have been gunned down in the Kashmir Valley this year. Jammu and Kashmir police have revealed this report and it is further learned that out of 118, as many as 32 foreign terrorists have been killed. Last year in 2021, a total of 55 terrorists were killed in the same period. Pakistan has always kept denying that it is training, recruiting and sending these terrorists across the border into Indian territory of Kashmir to create mayhem. But facts are otherwise. And it is now known by all the countries in the world that Pakistan is the mother of terrorism. Pakistan ISI is the one which is recruiting, which is training, setting up the training camps and then facilitating the infiltration into India and also keeping a direct contact with all those terrorists and the underground overground workers in India and asking them to do what it wants. Thousands of Kashmiris have lost their lives in proxy wars orchestrated by Pakistan and they continue to suffer due to terrorist groups supported by the Pakistan Army and spy agency, the ISI. Islamabad is unlikely to end its proxy war in Kashmir because it's the most cost-effective way of bleeding India through a thousand cuts. Hence, authorities in Kashmir need to tackle the situation. Jammu and Kashmir police and security forces have to work in synergy as hard intelligence is required to tackle the situation. There is an urgent need to break the chain of these attacks. Moving on, in the war tone of Afghanistan, situation is grim. Taliban-led violence and atrocities have forced a large number of common Afghan people to leave the country. Those who are left behind are facing increased terrorism and ongoing humanitarian crisis. A report. The Afghan refugee crisis is one of the largest protected refugee situations in the world. Today, over 6 million Afghans have been driven out of their homes and their country by conflict, violence and poverty. These numbers have been exacerbated by the Taliban seizure of power in August last year. The country is facing critical humanitarian crisis and the impact of the situation has been particularly devastating for women and children. India houses thousands of Afghan refugees who fled their countries when they came under the shackles of the Taliban rule and faced crimes against humanity like bombings. Afghanistan ki halat sabko pata tha ki us time bhi Afghanistan ki halat kharab thi us time bomb blasting kidnapping ki sab thi aur halat bahut kharab thi aur ek akeli maa ke liye bahut mushkil tha Afghanistan mein aur hum apni safety ke liye hind aa gaye Afghanistan is going through very difficult time and the de facto rulers in the war torn country are not willing to listen to what world leaders are demanding Instead, they are playing the blame game. On one hand, they are violating human rights in the country and on the other hand, the regime is holding West responsible for all the challenges country facing at the moment. Taliban rulers are not ready to accept the fact that in the absence of conservative ideology, situation in Afghanistan would have been in a much better place. Recently ignoring the fact what Taliban is doing in Afghanistan, Bilal Karimi, deputy spokesperson of Afghan interim government, said that the NATO troops committed crimes in the country. ما در طول 20 سال گذشته هر روز ده ها امواتنای ما کشته می شدن و زیر بمباردمان و زیر اسلحه ثقیله و همچنان دیگر موضوعاتی که تهدید آور بود به زندان ها انداخته می شدند زندان ها پر بودند از افغان ها این چیزایی که هستند که واقعیت هستند After the Taliban take over Afghanistan witnessed a surge in terror attacks claimed by Islamic state 
Before the takeover, the common Afghans were facing the atrocities of Taliban and now they are being killed by other terror groups also. Taliban denies the report that terrorism is increasing in the country and the group is reiterating that all the killings and bombings in the country have been done by NATO. For them, terror attacks by Islamic State are not a matter of serious concern. The situation in Afghanistan is getting worse day by day. There is an urgent need to save common Afghans. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.